Hey everyone, my name is Brian Craig. If you're new to my channel, this is where MAGA comes to talk. Well, President Trump just just did another miracle. I, you know, this entire year, in particular, the last few weeks have just been Trump miracle after Trump miracle. The latest is the uh, $50.5 million fundraising last night at just a single dinner that President Trump had, which is a new record. We're going to go through this. But, I mean, the, the everything's a miracle, I mean, you know, with, with President Trump. Everything they put against him and he's where he's at. But just in the last couple of weeks, they were going to seize all of his money and start doing a fire sale of all of his properties. And then look what happens. Donald Trump made $6 billion last week week and beat Letitia. And then he did this fundraiser and this $50.5 million at a single dinner here in Palm Beach, uh, of course, smashes records. I'm going to go through this article in the Post Millennial about it. But this is a significant thing because the people that are donating to Donald Trump are not people like you and me at this particular fundraiser. These are the uber rich and powerful of America who don't throw money around. They don't throw money around. They invest, and they're investing in making America great again, and they know that the future is with Trump and MAGA, and that is exactly why this happened. Now, if you're watching live, I do take calls live on my streams. The toll-free number is pinned to the top of the live chat. So let's go through this. I mean, this is just amazing. This is in the Post Millennial, which is a very, very good uh, conservative online outlet if you don't check it out. ThePostMillennial.com. Breaking Donald Trump raises over $50.5 million at Palm Beach Dinner. Smashing records. There he is, the greatest president ever. President Trump and groups behind him smashed fundraising records at a West Palm Beach fundraiser and dinner, dinner on Saturday, which was last night. The amount was double that of Joe Biden's recent New York City fundraiser. And, you know, this is really amazing. This, this fundraiser that Biden did, double. He raised, President Trump raised double. And Biden had, uh, there were three presidents there, right? Clinton. Obama and uh, Pops, Joe, this senile old coot that's selling America out right now. Plus, they had celebrities. So that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. In a press release from the Republican National Committee, which is beautiful, the Trump family taking over the RNC a couple of weeks ago is one of those Trump miracles that's been taking place lately. In a press release from the Republican National Committee, the RNC, the announcement was made about the record-breaking fundraiser. Today, the Trump campaign and Republican National Committee, the RNC, announced that President Trump's Palm Beach dinner will raise over $50.5 million, smashing every fundraising record in history for a Republican or Democrat. This comes after Biden's desperate New York event took three presidents to raise just $25 million. And as the Trump campaign and RNC small donor fundraising program continues to grow each month, the release said. So this is just a beautiful time and, uh, and another indicator that Trump is back and he's coming back. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Louisiana. Hey, Mike. You know, looking at that title for that story, and think think about this. He ra Trump raised $50 million, right? Huh? He's every time they're they're rate they're they're trying to raise money for Biden, right? And he's only getting twenty five million dollars at a pop, right? Trump seems to be doubling Biden up every time he opens. Yeah, I know, I know that, and that's a pretty easy. You know, I'll tell you, it's not just that they since since they. Uh, thank you for the call, Mike. I, I appreciate it. I mean, think about it: all the celebrities plus three presidents, and Trump doubled it. That's absolutely right. Um, Trump campaign senior advisor Chris Lasaveta Vita and Susie Weil said, Tonight will be an incredible night for President Trump and the Republican Party, raising an astounding $50.5 million. Meanwhile, after locking up the nomination in one of the fastest primaries in modern political history, no doubt about that, Donald J. Trump is winning poll after poll, improving the enthusiasm is on his side 
It's clearer than ever that we have the message, the operation, and the money to propel President Trump to victory on November 5th. And, you know, what, what President Trump has had going against him, well, in the last three and a half years, since it came down the escalator, in the last three and a half years, but even in the last year since they started putting up these idiots like uh, DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Chris Christie and all the rest against him, he's defeated. You guys, you know, the, the appreciation, I think, is, is often missed by people because we're so caught up in the daily excitement. But what, what he has done, President Trump, is completely defeat both the Republican and Democrat Party establishment, the fake news, mainstream, corporate legacy media empires, as well as the deep state. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And he did that with all of us who have been with him since the beginning. Let's see here. The RNC chairman, Michael Watley, and co-chairman Larry Trump, that's right, spoke to what Americans have perceived as Biden's largest failures in the polls, namely the border and the economy. The Republican Party is united behind the effort to elect President Donald J. Trump, and Americans are lining up to join our movement and retire crooked Joe Biden once and for all. And then President Trump posted this on... Truth Social. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. You will love my content. I put a lot of content up here. I live stream every day. Uh, I take live calls uh, when I'm live streaming. I also put vlogs and my podcast here, and there will be a new podcast this evening, so look out for that. So President Trump posted on, on Truth, biggest night in fundraising of all time. We'll double up what the, the Biden number of last week at Radio City. People are desperate for change. They want to make America great again. DJT, that's right, just like that great stock that I own. And then he made a statement. He is just arriving now. Let's listen in. Laughing stock all over the world. We're going to get that changed very quickly. And this has been some uh, incredible evening before it even starts because people, they wanted to contribute to a cause of making America great again. And that's, that's what's right. happened. We're going to make America great again. Everyone knows it. The election's going to be in now a little more than six months, and it's going to be the most important, I believe, election we've ever had. I think it's going to go down as the most important date in the history of our country. That's November 5th will be the most important date in the history of our country. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here. Did you talk to Garcia's family, President Trump? There you go. Boom. And look at this beautiful light coming in the doorway. And that's Lara and Eric. That looks like Don Jr. I could be wrong, but that stance, does that look like Don Jr. back there with that stance? And just that heavenly light. I like that. That's a great picture, isn't it? Looks like heaven. Oh, man. How exciting. What an exciting time. Oh, you know, the, the only thing... That President Trump ever said, and it was sarcastic, that I would disagree with is, I never get tired of winning, right? Do you guys get tired of winning? No way. None of us get tired of winning. We love it. We're winning. And it, it's not just personal. It's, it's the people are choosing our president. Donald Trump is the first president of the United States to not be pushed on the American people. I'm going back to General Washington. To not be pushed on the American people by the political establishment of the day. By the way, Adam, a new subscriber, welcome as a new sub to the channel. All right, so, uh, I mean, it is, it's, it's miraculous. It's miraculous. But just because we're winning so much, just because President Trump is breaking records like this every day, doesn't mean these snakes in the uniparty are just going to sit back and say, well, it's it's over. Believe me, they got all kinds of crap they're pulling, including these <clears throat> um, crooked judges. And uh, one is no more obvious of crookedness than this uh, skanky, I'm sorry, um, skanky uh, Stormy Daniels judge up in New York. And President Trump posted on True Social about that judge. <clears throat> we now have Merchant, that's the judge in the uh, Stormy Daniels case, who was not allowing me to talk. He increased the, um, he uh, 
increase the scope of the gag order against President Trump. Maybe think about this. It's, it's the United States. They got this lawfare crooked trial going on. Trump's the victim in the Stormy Daniels case. She was trying to extort money, but I got to let me get back to this. Uh, now we have Merchant, the judge, who is not allowing me to talk, thereby violating the law and the Constitution all at once. It is so bad what he is trying to get away with. How was he even chosen for this case? I heard he fought like hell to get it. And all of the rest of them also. If this partisan hack wants to put me in the clink for speaking the open and obvious truth, I will gladly become a modern-day Nelson Mandela. It will be my great honor. We have to save our country from these political operatives masquerading as prosecutors and judges, and I am willing to sacrifice my freedom for that worthy cause. This is a, this is this post to truth is is history. We are a failing nation, but on the, on November 5th we will become a great nation again. Make America great again. Now, this um uh, judge, you know, his daughter is a political consultant. And she has been paid $10 million by the Biden campaign and Adam Schiff campaigns. Now, I don't know what the hell she consults with that's worth $10 million. But my guess would be if you got the biggest political consultants in this country today, do any of them get $10 million just because? This judge's daughter is to her what Hunter is to Joe. All right. What I mean by that is this. This daughter getting $10 million from Biden and Adam Schiff for political consulting. The money's really for the judge, isn't it? The, 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 cons the political consulting firm is the equivalent of Burisma. It's what Burisma is for the Bidens. And everybody knows this. And, and this sick judge in his arrogance uh, putting, uh, putting gag orders on the leader of the political opposition, Donald Trump, with, with this obvious corruption going on, shows that these evildoers how evil they are. They're not even doing it in the darkness. They're doing it out in the open. But that's okay. You know, this, I've, been, I've been telling you guys for a long time that President Trump is a Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela-like figure. And Nelson Mandela... Was the, was the leader of the political opposition of his day. And they put him in prison. And he, and he came out of it stronger than ever. This judge, believe me, believe me, um, justice will be done with all of these people. Be and uh, because what they're doing, there, there has to be prosecutions for this after. They're going to call them political persecutions. But if this lawfare stands after Trump is in office for his second and non-consecutive term, this will be the new normal. And anyone who stands up against the sitting political powers will find themselves facing criminal cases as well. And that's just something that we've got to stop from becoming the new normal in the United States. I'm sorry. Now, um, Nicole Wallace has really... Um, been losing it a lot lately. And now remember, Nicole Wallace over on MSNBC used to work for John McCain. So she's one of these MSNBC fake Republicans that spends their life trashing Trump, making millions of dollars doing it, and they try to pass themselves off as nonpartisan over there because they have these traitor Republicans like Nicole Wallace and Michael Steele, Right. Exactly, exactly. There's a, here's a bit of her most recent show. It goes beyond more effective people moving us toward authoritarianism to all the people that were so far right, they were distasteful to many people in, in the center and, and, and everyone. Really, who, you know, this, this over-intellectualizing of, of this, using a lot of words and sentences with fancy language that, and saying absolutely jack, right? of people moving us toward authoritarianism to all the people that were so far right they were distasteful to many people in, in the center and, and and everyone on the center left none of yeah. them are in none of them are you know, how bad is it it's so bad that mike pence's former vp isn't voting for him and, and neither well see mike pence 
Mike Pence was a spy the whole time, okay? He was never with Trump. I don't know how he weaseled his way in there. But my guess has always been, you know, since, since Mike Pence's, you know, is that Mike Pence was the source of pretty much all the major leaks out of the Trump first term, out of the Trump White House, because President Trump had him in in every meeting, and he'd go out and leak it. He was never with us. So this idea that he didn't endorse Trump and that means something, who gives it? You know, the only people that care what P Pence says and who Pence endorses are Democrats and Trump haters, okay? The never Trumpers. None of us who support Trump care what Mike Pence has to say ever, but uh, he was most definitely working against Trump the entire time he was vice president. There are mm -hmm. any of the other people that served in his cabinet. It's, it's hard. It's all relative, right? It, it, we're going to choose between a Republican and a Democrat. No, you're not going to choose between a Republican who is so repulsive to his own former vice president that he... Th th don't you like this? He's repulsive to his own former vice president. Over there on MSNBC, these, these fake Republicans like Nicole Wallace here are so far gone in their never-Trumper, Trump derangement syndrome suffering that they actually believe that Mike Pence is a credible voice opposing Trump. And, and all these leftists that are putting Mike Pence up on this pedestal of the oracle of all that is of, of, of knowledge when it comes to such things, if you remember when Trump picked him, to be uh, his running mate, they were telling us he was the biggest homophobe in the, in the country, that uh, he had the don't pray the gay away thing, and that he was um, uh, having sweat lodges where they were sweating the, and praying the gay or out of people, the gay conversion therapy. Remember all that? Now all of a sudden, this man who they consider to be the biggest homophobe in America is now the oracle of all knowledge and credibility. And choose between a Republican mm -hmm. who is so repulsive to his own former vice president that he will not vote for him for the first time in American political history. Right, and you're hearing the same sorts of things from uh, his former national security advisor, his former chiefs of staff, his his former yeah, uh, defense Sykes. secretary. Yeah, all never Trumper snakes who lied their way in to the Trump administration. Um, you know, it is interesting looking back at uh, 2017. You know, the the. Oh boy, yeah. Well, let's look back at 2017. Hey, caller, hold on for a second. Let me finish up with this jerk. The original Trump uh, administration actually was staffed hey. with with uh, with well, a lot I'm... of normie re Republicans. Normie Republic? I can hear you. Hold on, caller. Charlie Sykes here, another one of these traitors, you know, that we were filled up with normie Republicans, and now we don't have normie Republicans. Normie Republicans are Republicans who go on MSNBC and trash Donald Trump. That makes you normal. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Charlie. I'm calling from Evansville, Indiana. Hey, Charles. Charlie, what's up? So I'm in your chat room right now. So listen, I'm a fan of Trump. I'm a fan of the Republican Party. Yeah. I but think the Democrats get to the but, are... but but sorry? you're you're a fan of Trump. But what were you saying? I I don't think I used the word but did I? Oh no, I was waiting for it. The way you were saying, the way you were started off that sentence sounded like there was a but coming. All right, go ahead. No, just 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 relax for a second. Oh, here we I'm go. a fan of Trump. I was not a, a fan of. Uh, Pence. Okay. Okay. Right. So just 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 relax. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Republican, massive fan of, of what Trump wants to do. I think what he's going to bring to the to our world. I think what the, what the Democrats have done to the blacks, that they use them for their votes. They're absolutely horrific individuals. Here's my question for you. Why did Trump pick uh, Pence as his vice president? Yeah, there's the but we don't we don't know. And there, there's someone – th th that's a good question. We don't know. There's someone in Trump's orbit. They may not be there now, but they were certainly there in the first term and during the campaign. And they got Trump to do three things. And, and I would track down who the originator of these three things were. Uh, and it's the same person who picked um, Pence, who, who pushed Pence – into the Trump orbit. Who was, oh, I just forgot the name now. Who was Trump's first uh, attorney general that started the Russia hoax uh, investigation? I just forgot his name. The senator that became his first attorney general. What was his name? I don't remember. Somebody don't, in the chat, tell me. That. Somebody in the chat, tell me. I just forgot his name just as I was about to say it. But whoever in initiated the original spark of an idea in Trump's orbit to choose Pence as his running mate, 
to um, uh, pick his first attorney general who started the uh, Mueller investigation, right? And um, who, who, who gave him the idea of going out and giving the speech in the Washington Mall on January 6th is all the same person, would be my guess. Whoever came up with the original that spark of the, that of the Burr, right? sessions, sessions. So whoever, whoever yeah, got Jeff Trump, Wilson. okay, Jeff whoever, Wilson. whoever yeah. got Trump to pick Sessions, whoever got Trump to pick Pence, and whoever got Trump to uh, go out and give a speech on January 6th at the National Mall, whoever came up with that spark of an idea and, and, and got it to Trump is probably the same person. And whoever that person is was sabotaging Trump every step of the way. They brought Sessions in. They brought Sessions hey, in. Well, let me Can finish. They brought Sessions in for the uh, Mueller investigation. They brought Pence in to spy and, and, and leak. And the January 6th speech in the Washington Mall was was to set him up. So that's that's the best okay. answer I can give you. So let me let me ask you a question. Mm hmm. OK, yeah. can you hear me? I can hear you. So so uh, listen, I'm, I'm a fan of like probably 60 to 80 percent of what Donald Trump brings to the United States of America. 60 to right? 80, 60 to 80. All right, go ahead. Finish your thought. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't, first of all, I don't agree with anybody. I don't trust my mother. I don't trust my father. I don't trust really? my wife. I, no, I don't fully you don't trust, trust your wife? I don't, I don't trust, no, I don't fully trust any fucking human being. I don't trust any Can human being. Can you watch being, your mouth? Fully. Do you, you have to use it? It's Sunday morning. Do you have to use the F word? You don't trust your wife? Okay, you I know what? You're right. You're right. Anybody, I, anybody, I, anybody, 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 I trust, there, here's all the, I trust my wife with my life. If you don't trust your for wife. Now. For now, you do. For now, for now, no, for now, for now. No. No, I trust my wife nah, with my life. You have no clue. Nah, you know what? You could end up tripping up in a few days from now, and your wife was like, "You know what? I don't like this guy anymore. I'm not. I don't want to Believe be with me, him." Believe me, if my wife, if my years. wife woke up this morning, she's up now already. By the way, that's just a figure of speech. But if my if my wife woke up this morning and was angry at me, I would have done something wrong, deserving of it. I trust my wife, and okay, I and I think what? for the hey, fact. Hey, I Brian, think for hey, the Brian, fact. Brian, excuse Brian. me. Excuse me. The fact that you. Don't trust your wife says something about you. But now you say you only trust Trump 60 to 80 percent. I trust Trump 100 percent of the time. What do you not trust Trump okay, about? That's why you're delusional. Because why you're delusional. Do you, why, see, this is the but I mentioned, guys. I could hear I, I, that I picked out when he first got well, on, no, the, Brian, on the line. Brian, Brian, Tell me you, what you, you don't trust speak, him Brian, about. You, won't give me, okay, you go ahead and talk. You go ahead and talk. You go ahead. Go ahead. What do you not trust Trump about? Uh, Brian? I'm a fan of his. I'm a fan of maybe sixty keep to eighty percent of what he does. What do you not trust him okay, on? But you, 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 you won't let me finish. You keep on cutting me off. Go ahead and talk. I asked you a question. You haven't answered. What do you not trust him about? Because I don't. I don't you, Brian, you cannot trust anyone fully. You can well, never paranoid. trust anyone fully. You're paranoid. No, I'm not paranoid, Brian. Brian, you, how long have you been married? Twenty-seven years. Okay, Brian, I'm not sure what your wife looks like, but there's a 100% chance that if I saw her at Trader Joe's and I was attracted to her, I'd probably start, start talking to her, and she would say, you know what? I like this guy's personality. Maybe I'm going to exchange numbers with him. Maybe I'm going to have a conversation with him. Yes? Oh, I, oh, you're a narcissist. You think you're so irresistible to women that wives will leave their husbands for No. I but I, I, but I, 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 I asked I'm, you, I'm not, I, what do you not trust Trump about, and you haven't answered? You're so – listen – Joe Biden, I have no trust in him on any level. Well, you trust, trust no one. There, there. Well, no, I, you, you can never fully trust anyone, Brian. Sure you can. Brian, people, people Brian, Brian, do you trust your mother and father and your grandparents fully? Uh, my grandparents are dead, and, and my parents, yes, I do trust, yes. Okay, so did you, was your, did you ever have a step-parent? Yes. Okay, do you trust your step-parent fully? Yes. They're also passed away. Seriously? But yes, I did. Well, hold on. Yeah. Wait, hold on. You, you, okay, that step. Okay, that's fine. Okay, listen, I'm not sure where this conversation is going. Well, I don't Why know. You, you I, I, I think I think what you need is 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 therapy. You're a narcissistic paranoid. I'm not a narcissist. I don't trust anyone fully. Yeah, you, you, you want, think you, you think you're so irresistible I, that you could go I'm into not. a grocery store no, and no, steal no, wives no, from I men. You're not. You weren't being honest, be honest before. Uh, you, oh, so before you okay, weren't being honest. Be, okay, okay, no, I, I was completely. I honest, just assumed you were I, being I, honest I, the whole conversation. No, no, I was honest. Can I say something right now? 
You've said a lot. Okay, Brian, I'm a cheater. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I oh, there you go. A liar, a, a, a cheat, and a thief. Okay. That's 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 who's opposing Trump. I'm surprised he didn't get an in. He might have been invited to Don Lemon's wedding. Did you see Don Lemon's wedding? He married his husband there. You know, he's got a husband now. And uh, he invited Alec Baldwin and Matt Lauer. He invited a killer. And Matt Lauer's had the worst accusations a man can have made against him by women. That guy, that's who opposes Trump. Liar and cheaters. That's right. Oh, my goodness. What a, what a strange fella, huh? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, ladies, do you think that guy could take you, steal you from your husband at, the, at, at Trader Joe's? Oh, my goodness. Ugh, boy, we have Trader Joe's here in Florida. I'm not a fan of Trader Joe's. Yeah, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Brian, it's Charlie again. No, it's one call per show, man. Sorry, Charlie. Uh, one call per show. Oh, my goodness. If you'd like to, it's one call per show. I don't have a lot of rules, um, but that's one of them. So um, one call per show. You can call me every day, but you can only call me once per show. If you'd like to call in, the uh, number is pinned to the top of the live chat. Now, um, the five over on Fox News has really been getting um, – heated and they've got their liberal uh, girl over there Jessica Tarloff who um, has been having a lot of problems lately if you've been following and um, this exchange here you know Jessica Tarloff who is you know she's a Democrat operative she's the token liberal on the five but she went to the London School of Economics for um, her, or I guess her graduate school, right? And you got to ask yourself, what kind of American kid goes to the London School of Economics? And to me, the London School of Economics, American kids that go there for graduate school, that sounds like a CIA recruiting place, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound like a CIA training school? It does to me. Um, if, if this is Charlie... Charlie's going to get banned from the program. Yeah, you're on the air. You have no Char other Charlie, calls, Charlie, so I do have other calls. I'm going it, it, one call per day. I'll block your number if I have to. I don't want to, and I don't want to ban you, but I will. Well, you kept no, no, no. I'm not going to allow you to hijack the show. Didn't I tell you he was a narcissist? He's trying to make the whole show about him. There are other calls, and I and I saw that it was him. Okay, so anyway, Jessica Tarloff. Um, uh, who I believe is probably deep state CIA. She's the Democrat operative over on um, The Five. And she's been under a lot of pressure on the air. And The Five is live, okay? And, you know, as one, one of the things I learned many, many years ago in this business was that when... You know, when you get angry, truly angry on the air and lose your cool and you're live, it has the effect on the brain that's similar to intoxication. You lose control of what you're saying and what you're doing. And Jessica Tarloff, um, well, she said that quiet part out loud. Listen. Oh, let me turn the volume up. There we go. Biden, but let me ask you this. You know a lot of Trump supporters. Do we need to be deprogrammed? Be careful. That's why I come to work every day. <laughs> now, that's, that's why I come to work every day. Uh, media smears Trump voters calls for deprogramming. And in this instance, I don't think Jessica Tarloff is joking. I think Jessica Tarloff is as serious as a heart attack. And she actually thinks that she is performing a mission of deprogramming for, uh, for Biden. But let me ask you this. You know a lot of Trump supporters. Do we need to be deprogrammed? Be careful. That's why I come to work every day. <laughs> no, I, yeah. It is correct that conservatives are much more tolerant of liberals and spending time with them than liberals are of conservatives. That shows up especially in the dating data that a liberal would never consider going out with a conservative in the Trump. 
a liberal would never consider going out with a conservative. Um, you know, a conservative, it depends on what we're talking about going out with, okay? You know, um, if you're talking about going out and hooking up, as opposed to, say, you know, having a relationship. Those are two different things. You know, a liberal and a conservative in, a, in an actual relationship wouldn't work. And the reason that it wouldn't work is pretty simple. It wouldn't work because you have two different worldviews and uh, liberals have no morality. But when she says deprogram, she is not kidding. She is as serious as a heart attack. And, you know, for her to say that and then try to, you know, brush it off as a joke, that's what the left are doing, attempting to do through movies and television and TikTok and um, uh, fact checkers and all of these things. Their whole mission is to do one thing and one thing only. And that is to either deprogram you or condition you to think in a certain way. And that's just something that, you, you, you know, you have to recognize. And as an adult, you're not as, you know, um, likely to fall for this. But the younger you are, the more likely the deprogramming is uh, going to have an impact on you and your mind. So that's why you got to keep your kids close. And when you have kids, you got grandkids, you need to talk to them about the news and what's going on in the news. Gigi, $10 super sticker. Thank you so much for that. Now, um, I wanted to, before I get into this, I wanted to pull up a story before I move on to the next thing. Hold on. Yes, okay. This story here is one of the sickest, most twisted stories that um, I've seen in the last few months. And it, you know, here we are in 2024. And to see stories like this in 2024, um, it's just upsetting. And it, and it should be upsetting to everyone. And this is this blackish actress, star of sitcom Blackish, claims Trump will put black people in camps if he's reelected, says this mother effer is Hitler. Let's play some of this, and then we'll go through the article. And, you know, what, what's scary about this is that, you know, this anti-white racism is now becoming acceptable in out-of-the-closet, open culture. It's becoming like, well, of course, what you're saying about these these racist things you're saying about white people is just considered to be the truth. And they've disguised it in into some fake science called critical race theory. But listen to this woman. Black people don't want to fight you. We All we want to do is feed our children mm -hmm. and be equal. No, wait, let me, let me rewind it a little bit. There we go. Black people don't want to fight you. We, all we want to do is feed our children mm -hmm. and be equal. But honey, white people are scared. They're becoming a minority. The world is brown. Yeah. And they're going to do everything they see, can. See, her world is brown because she hates white people. And, and this, this racist woman right here has segregated herself where she is only surrounded by non-white people. I live in a very multicultural world, not just in my family, but in my neighborhood and in my life. But she lives in a racially self-segregated world where she, she hates white people, she hates them like the plague, so she's cut them out of her uh, life and circle and only interacts with them when absolutely necessary. So in her world, there are no white people anymore. Everyone's brown because she has self-segregated. People don't want to fight you. We All we want to do is feed our children mm -hmm. and be equal. But honey, white people are scared. I don't know why I keep stopping. They're becoming a minority. The world is brown. Yeah. And they're going to do everything 
they can to stay in those gated communities, not pay taxes. I don't know why he keeps pausing, but I'll keep and it put play. those in their places. Wow, she said the n-word there. And get yeah. those out of this goddamn country. We own this. Well, guess what? You will not win. Notice the dramatic pause for effect, right? As she's broadcasting, she she pauses. So those that are listening to her racist rant here can ponder everything she just said. Damn country, we own this. Well, guess what? You will not win. Because love is the answer. Wow, she thinks that she's love. I mean, that is just sick, so vile, and it's also sad. You know, um, I I'm a I'm a big, 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 big um, person who honors the the legacy of the late great Martin Luther King and 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 Rosa Parks, and you know, never got to meet Rosa Parks, but. Martin Luther King died before I was born, but I, I met once John Lewis, who was a wackadoodle congressman, but but John Lewis, when he was a teenager, when he was 16, went to work with um, Martin Luther King, and John Lewis was in Selma with Martin Luther King when Martin Luther King and and his activists faced down those, those evil, racist, white Democrats who attacked them because they were going to vote Republican when they crossed the bridge, and and John Lewis was a freedom fighter, and I met him once, uh, had him on the air, and I shook hands with him, and I said, and I said to him, I said, uh, Congressman, I, 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 can I shake your hand? And he, and 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 we shook hands, and I said, uh, this is the uh, the closest I'll ever get to the great Martin Luther King, and I and I just wanted to shake your hand because I knew, you know, I know that. Martin Luther King shook this hand many times, you know, and and he patted me on the back. Now he went on to be a lunatic later. I didn't agree with him on a lot of things, what he became. But what this woman here is talking about is such a, a dishonoring of the freedom riders of Martin Luther King and all those great civil rights leaders, including uh, the the greats like, like Frederick Douglass, you know, who worked so hard for blacks to be free and equal. And and now here we are in a situation where that's happened. And then look what's happened here. You know, you, you have African Americans like this lady who are just as racist as racist gets. She's talking with the races reversed the way the Ku Klux Klan used to talk about 100 years ago, the Democrat Ku Klux Klan, because the Klan are Democrats, remember. And... She's got smile on her face, smile in her voice, and she's celebrated with mm-hmms by, by the lady in the, in the studio with her like this is brilliant. And that's, that's some of the ugliest uh, discussions I've ever heard come out of someone's, someone's mouth. So um, it says here, uh, one of the stars of the hit sitcom Blackish has claimed that Donald Trump will put black people in camps if he's reelected. She also called Trump Hitler. On Thursday, the 67-year-old actress Jennifer Lewis sat down with Zerlina Maxwell, host of the radio show Mornings with Zerlina on Sirius XM. Lewis began by uh, calmly discussing voter apathy. She appeared to lose her temper uh, when she started talking about Trump and Trump voters. The Blackish star said that if he's reelected, Trump would take a hammer and break the glass where the Constitution is. Uh, she could, you know. Meanwhile, this is the guy that they're using the legal system against. Uh, she continued by saying that the current Republican frontrunner, that's Trump, would tear the Constitution up in our faces. Now I'm the king of the effing world. Uh, she says you'll bow down, and then I guess the B word there. He'll punish everyone that didn't vote for him. You know, um, this is this is the deal with this. Okay, she is just an old-fashioned racist. She is just a sick, hardcore um, racist beyond imagination. And um, for that host just to sit there and uh-huh her 
when when she was saying those those vile things shows that in the audience of that program, whatever it is, I've never heard of that show before, that that's mainstream thinking. That's just hate speech, and the liberals supposedly are against all that. Welcome to my channel, everyone. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. You'll enjoy my content, I promise you. Now, this story here I wanted to share with you, uh, and it's relevant for a reason. Um, an abducted woman escaped her attacker. She fleed to safety months after he kidnapped her and subjected her to horrific torture. Now, this guy, uh, he's not an illegal. His name's Walter. Uh, he kidnapped the woman allegedly in January and held her hostage. He beat her with a bat. He stabbed her with a, uh, a flathead screwdriver. She escaped when he left her alone for a moment in Walgreens, and she ran away. Here's the monster. Um, that's the woman. They, she's blurred out, you know, took her to the store, and she, she escaped. Look at this. Look at this, this coward. Well... He's, he's going away. He's going away. And, you know, this, this guy's a monster. And I, I want to ask you a question. When you see what this guy did, he kidnapped her. He beat her with a bat, stabbed her with a screwdriver. I, I mean, I assume he sexually assaulted her. If you were Joe Biden, would you give this guy aid and comfort? If you were Joe Biden, would you send him relief supplies? If you were Joe Biden, would you have this guy and his representatives sit down and mediate uh, some type of truce with the woman that he abducted, beat, and did whatever else he did with her family? Of course not. That'd be stupid. But that's exactly what Joe Biden is doing with Hamas and Israel. You know, what Hamas did to Israel... They did this how many times over to how many different women? Beat them, raped them, killed them, stabbed them, shot them, tortured them, still holding many of them against their will. How many? Why would you give aid and comfort and treat people like this on a grander scale as credible people? It makes no sense to me. And you know what? I think it makes not a lot of sense to most everybody, to tell you the truth. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, that's how the liberals are. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, good Good morning. I've been trying hey, to Richie. answer for about 25 minutes. Well, I had some things I wanted to get uh, off my chest, plus Charlie, you know. Yeah, here's, here's, the, here's the deal, okay? They're going after President Trump on a regular basis. And they're gaslighting everybody. They're, they're, they're sitting there saying, well, he's, if he gets into office, he's going to do this and do that. They, they, they must be brain dead because he was in office for four years, didn't do any of that. Matter of fact, if you compare him to what's going on today, it's like, it's like day and night. There's no way in hell anybody with half a brain would vote for this dead man in the White House. He's brain dead. Mm. So somebody's, I mean, everything they're doing, everything they're doing, and, 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 you, and you mentioned Jessica Tarloff, okay? Now, to, you, you make a pretty decent living. You're on the radio. I mean, you have your podcast. Uh, you're doing pretty good for yourself. And, and, you're, and you're a capitalist, okay? That's right. I'm She's a capitalist. In her That's ivory right. Tower. She's sitting in her ivory tower. I can picture this, this woman. She has no clue what's going on. She's probably got a doorman in midtown Manhattan in a fancy building that she lives in. She, she's not afraid of walking down the street because she's probably very close to where she works. Uh, although they are punching women right in the face as they walk down the street. They have no problem with that. So, so, but she's, she's like, uh, she's not in touch. It's like the people in Washington, D.C. They don't go to public. They don't see prices of food. Yeah. I mean, they, the rich. they, don't, see, they don't see that. I mean, it go, goes on and on and on. They got people, they got people that are flying into this country past the border now because they, they can't get enough of them in fast enough and and 90 percent of them are being dropped in texas and florida we don't know who to help well out you know there. it's it's like i what remember I during the um during the baby formula shortage right you know that's a supply chain issue which uh fall, falls under you know booty judge's department you know as the transportation secretary and he had babies at the time and i remember saying you know this guy you know he um 
he probably has a wet nurse that comes to his house for his baby. So the baby formula doesn't doesn't affect him. These people live at another level beyond what normal people yeah. live at. So they're, you know, the Democrats, one of the things the Democrats were able to do in the past that has been completely reversed since Trump is they've lost touch with the pulse of the American people. And they've become such elitist in, in, in a bubble they don't understand. Like, for example, I was talking about on my last live stream, they're, they're talking about the job numbers. How many jobs did they say were created in March? Like 300 or 500? A huge number, right? If, if, if that number is even Government. true, yeah, well, if that number is even true, right, it, it, I don't know, it's like three or five, some huge number. If that number is even true that they came out of jobs that, that Biden created in March, which he didn't, you know, how many of those jobs no. go to, if, if the numbers, let's just assume the number is true for the discussion, say it's 500,000 jobs. How many of those jobs went to illegals, right? How many of those jobs um, are second part-time jobs? that full-time workers have to take because food prices are up 40%. You understand what I mean? You, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's you ridiculous. Must been, you must have been, yeah, you must have been doing research because they said most of those jobs, after the, the jobs report came in, they were fact-checked, part-time and, oh. to, and to... No, I didn't do any research. It just I mean, makes common sense because I see, you know, how, how it's going. I mean, look at me. Look at, look, at how many, look at how many shows I do. I got a radio show. I got a podcast. I've got my uh, YouTube live streams and stuff I do. That's like three jobs right there. Do I get counted three times? I got another YouTube channel I vlog on. So, you know, I got like four, you know, jobs right there. Do those get counted as four jobs or one? It's amazing. You understand what I mean? It's four. Yeah, it, four. By, yes, exactly. <laughs> but, but guess what? You created your own job. They didn't create a job for you. This, yeah. This is such a fallacy. Yeah. This is such a fallacy. When somebody hires somebody at, at, a, at a supermarket, that's not Biden hiring them. First of all, Biden doesn't do anything. He's a brain dead person that they parade out there. No, he does he a lot. Know where he, he is. does a lot. The world's in chaos. Yeah, damaged, America's damaged, under attack damaged. during uh, with the southern border invasion. He yeah, does a you, lot. You, you know, and then Tony. Hey, listen, real far, far policy. That's a real big one. Tony Blinken goes out and says, "Hey, uh, Ukraine is gonna is gonna be a member a member of of this." What do you call it? It's amazing. I just, I, I can't, I just get crazy when I think about how these people gaslight everybody. Mm -hmm. It's total gaslighting. I mm -hmm. mean, and, and it's Nicole Wallace. I remember you brought her up. Okay. I don't believe that there are Republicans and Democrats. I think that president Trump basically had to run as a Republican because third parties are not successful. Correct. But if you take a look at the Republican party, just look at the look at the United States Congress. There's about 60 congressmen that are de basically MAGA. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are uniparty. Yeah, they, they vote for sending That's money right. to Ukraine. They vote That's for right. open borders. That's they right. Do, they vote. For and I'm dying. I'm dying to they know what they got on um, uh, Mike Johnson. Did they set him up with a hooker or something and got the video of it? What What do they got on Mike Johnson? So what that we have a one seat I, majority? I, That's still the majority. Yeah. They, they Why isn't they Biden impeached? I don't know what's going to happen with this election because I, I, I got to tell you, they haven't performed. They have to get more MAGA people in there. And and we're not a cult, by the way. I, I They keep on mentioning that we're a cult. And this guy that called you up, by the way, that said that you don't trust, you don't trust. Well, there's, the narcissist? there's parts of this that I, 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 I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, it's not a cult. I believe in President Trump's policies 150 percent. Mm -hmm. I'm to the point where I feel that if, if there's no other choice but him and President Biden, and and fact is there's no other there's no other choice but him mm -hmm. and the rest of the whole crew. Yeah. If you don't get him in there, we are <clears throat> done as a yeah, country. That's right. Nobody can tell me. You know, President President Trump is uh, President Trump is winning not to just make America great again. But to save America, remember he was – save America was going to be his campaign slogan in the beginning when he started running for this time. And he said, i got to stick with make America great again. He's running to make America great again, save America, and save Western civilization. All right, Richie, i, I got to run, but thanks for the call. Uh, since I mentioned it, you know, I have a uh, another YouTube channel. It's not politics. It's where I, I vlog. And if you guys could follow me there, I'd appreciate it. Main Street Moments. And uh, I put up a new vlog just yesterday there. 
and uh, you could, you know, I go all over the place and vlog and do all kinds of things. It's going to play a commercial. Hold on. Hold on, guys. That's what happens. There you go. Yeah, but I go around and do uh, all kinds of vlogging all over the place. It's Main Street Moments. Follow me on that channel. I do uh, a lot of vlogging there. This is, uh, I went to uh, an inlet here not too far from my house on my Vespa yesterday, the MAGA scooter. So go and check that out if you don't mind. Main Street Moments right there. And it's my other YouTube channel. And if you subscribe to that, see there's me in the thumbnail. I'd appreciate it. All right. So yeah, Richie, the bus driver is as not always, but as most of the time, he's right on the money on everything he said. I could not disagree with a single thing. Now, I, I you know, getting back though to what I was talking about. So this um, sick kidnapper of this woman who held her pr prisoner and stabbed her, probably sexually assaulted her, because why do you guys kidnap women like that, right? I mean, it's sick. And he's going to go to prison, and there's no, uh, there's no sympathy for that guy, right? But, but the left uh, expect us to have sympathy for these um, Now, tell me why I'm that, uh, wrong. Where I get okay, hold on. We'll tell you why you're wrong in just a minute, Chris. Just simmer down, okay? But... What, what Hamas did to Israel is what that monster that was arrested yesterday did to that woman times, I don't know how many. How many women did they victimize that way? Yet we're supposed to give them aid and comfort and sit down and have agreements with them and ask, uh, is Israel to allow these rapists and murderers of women and abusers of women to continue to, to, to do what it is they're doing? These people are sick. My personal take... On something I feel strongly about, What's and then that? my friends here weigh in. For six months, we've witnessed the deaths of tens of thousands of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. The IDF mm -hmm. striking back at Hamas after it killed more than a thousand Israelis in that savage attack on October 7th. For some, that's the collateral damage of war. For others, it's a slaughter that violates every rule of humanity. Okay. Now, I am uh, a peacenik. I'm opposed to war, as is President Trump. President Trump was opposed to the Iraq War, by the way, and, and, and that's that. <clears throat> but I'll tell you this. Um, here we are. We, we, you, you watch your mainstream media. You hear uh, poor Palestinians, poor Gazians, poor Hamas. Where's his sympathy? And it wasn't just women. They killed men, too, and kidnapped men. But where is, is Chris Wallace, who's only here because his daddy made some accomplishments, Mike, where, where's his sympathy towards the hundred or so Israelis that are still being held hostage, many of them being tortured and raped as we speak by the Palestinians in Gaza, by Hamas? Where's his sympathy for them? You know, all this would stop if they would release them. Then, <clears throat> this week... The Israelis killed seven workers from World Central Kitchen who are trying to bring food to Gaza's starving people. Okay, you can't bring food to the enemy during wartime. Okay, you cannot bring food and supplies to the enemy during wartime. And if you bring relief supplies into Gaza, Hamas takes them. Still notice, no concern for the women hostages that are being beaten, tortured, and raped striking their three vehicles in three separate attacks. This is how Jose Andres, founder of World Central... Kitchen okay, we don't need to hear any of that. But you notice in all of these stories, never, 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 never do they have any sympathy for the Israeli women and what they've gone through. And it's, it's worse than we even want to know, quite frankly. Okay? Um, and I'm sorry... Um, I'm not going to make any uh, apologies for my support for Israel. Now, I will also, uh, I, I'll talk about this maybe uh, in more detail another time. I'm not going to get into it too much uh, right now. I'm not going to go through the tweets and everything. I was going to, but I changed my mind. Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens, <clears throat> did you hear about what's going on with them? Uh, and I'm getting very suspect of them. Hold on. All right, hold on. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. good morning. All right, Mike, this is no, 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 Char Charlie. Charlie, that's it. I mean, I, I got. I'm gonna have to ban you. I told you. I told you once a day. You can call me every day, but 
you've called how many times, including the ones I didn't pick up today. Okay, I'm going to give you this as a just the final warning. I, I, I don't. I, listen, hold on. I, I enjoy people that challenge me, and I and I enjoy oppositional phone calls. I don't mind that at all. But you're not going to hijack the show and take it over. I, I told you one call per show, and every and and I take all the calls screenless. I'm not. I have not banned you yet. I've not blocked your number, but I will if if you persist. All right. I, I, you could, you know, like Richie and I get into it all the time. We agree today. We get into it all the time. Can I tell you what? But, I'm, can I tell you no, what I'm it's no, no. It's one. Call me tomorrow. I'm watching Johnny Carson. I'm watching okay, Johnny watching, Carson's see, final can't, episode. Okay. Good. Well, enjoy that. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I've got one simple rule: one call per day. I take all the calls screenless, okay, um, So, which I enjoy doing. And I take the call screenless because I think it makes the show more interesting uh, for me uh, and you uh, for a bunch of reasons I'm not going to get into right now. But um, I've gave him several warnings. I don't think my one call per show is unreasonable. Um, but that I'm going to – because he's a little out of control – I'm going to give him just that one warning. If he does it again, he's out. And I hate, I don't like, I believe me, I don't like telling people they can't call anymore. Uh, that was four times on the air. There were a bunch of times I didn't answer. I answered at that time just so I could give him the, the warning. All right, now let me get back to, um, and I don't always take calls because people are calling in. You heard Richie saying I was calling in. Uh, I don't just go on the air and say, here's the number, call me and hijack the... I do open phones on Friday when I do that. Open On Friday's show, it's open phones. I call it Open Maga Mike Friday. And on Friday's show, <clears throat> you know, you can call in about anything and everything on your mind. But the other days, you know, I got to... You, you got to call in about what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I'm not, I'm not hosting a show. I'm just uh, a call center, <laughs> right? But um, anyway, I don't think that's an un reasonable uh, rule. But anyway, this thing with uh, Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. So she was fired. They had a mutual parting of the ways from the Daily Wire. Um, and it, it, ha it was over Israel. I mean, come on. I, I don't know why. I mean, there may be a lot of other issues. I, I'm imagining there's a lot of egos between <laughs> Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. I get that. And, you know, they let egos get in the way. And you know, and I'm sure she's could be a diva, <clears throat> but the main, the 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 final thing that led to it was her position on Israel. Now, I I do not like Ben Shapiro at all. Uh, I do agree with him on Israel, but I don't like him at all. He's a never Trumper. Uh, I don't really listen to his show. If something newsworthy happens, I'll tune it in. But uh, I don't like him. He talks as fast as an auctioneer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing with that's going on now. I want to share with you because I just want to hear if you think I'm nuts about it. So there's been some Twitter X exchanges between Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, and Jeremy Boring. Jeremy Boring runs uh, the Daily Wire. And Ben Shapiro challenged Candace Owens to a live debate Monday at 5 p.m. She tweeted back, she can't do that because she's in England. She's in London. <clears throat> and there was some going back and forth on Saturday between Jeremy Boring and Candace Owens on X because it's the Sabbath. Ben, can't, ben Shapiro can't use X on the Sabbath. So they, they've been going back and forth, and it's a debate over Israel. Uh, ben Shapiro challenged Candace Owens to a debate on Israel. And... Uh, but 5 p.m. Monday. Jeremy Boring said they'll do it without a moderator and it'll be on YouTube and Twitter and there'll be no ads. It won't be behind the Daily Wire paywall, et cetera, et cetera. Patrick Bet David has offered to put up $250,000 that he will donate to the family of Lincoln Riley if they do sit down and debate one another, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, which I'm not crazy about Patrick Bet David doing that. I, I like Patrick Bet David, but if he's got the 250 to to give, just give it to Lake and Riley's family anyway, please, Patrick Bet David. Um and uh also Candace Owens was talking about maybe having Joe Rogan moderate and then Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro like no moderator. Um <clears throat> Candace Owens there's there's a couple things about this. 
Uh, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro are very good um, at debate. Uh, but they both have areas that they're really good at. Um, and Candace Owens' kryptonite in debate is Israel um, because she's just not educated enough on that issue. And Ben Shapiro, that's his big issue. And if there's a debate on Israel, there's no way that at the end of it, um, Ben Shapiro doesn't doesn't come out on top because she just doesn't know enough about the history or concepts of of the the whole issue to debate a top person like him who's more schooled on it probably than most anybody in um, in that type of thing. But but I started thinking about it and I'm I'm starting to think that this whole thing with Candace Owens leaving the Daily Wire very well may have been a big publicity stunt. And you guys let me know what you think about this. And this is why I'm not saying this is 100% true, but I'm getting very suspect of it and I'll tell you why. Um, and you can let me know in the chat or the comments. I don't want to take calls on this, <clears throat> you know. Um, Candace Owens was just recently let go from the Daily Wire. It was a firing mutual agreement. They both wanted to get rid of each other. They fired each other is the best scenario possibly out of it. Why would the Daily Wire allow a former employee who left under very intense uh, circumstances, sit down live with their uh, founder and have a debate on something. Because, you know, a disgruntled ex-employee has a lot of grievances and not a, not, not a lot of filters anymore, and they can reveal so many things <laughs> that are internal that you wouldn't want people to know about the company and inner workings and individuals and agendas and all kinds of things. It doesn't make sense to me that Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro would welcome a, a debate like that live, totally uncontrolled and unfiltered, with no moderator, with someone they just fired who's pissed off at them, and could say something's up with that, and I'm, I'm, and you know, Candace Owens, you know, this, this is, and I, and I think even the biggest fan of Candace Owens would agree with this. Candace Owens, what she's best at, is trolling people, and she's gotten famous through trolling different people, whether it's a black celebrity or or Ben Shapiro right now, okay, and to me, it seems more like. She's working with the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring, then against them. Because I just don't see a scenario. Have, do you know of a situation ever in history where there's been a high-profile firing, not just in media, but in any industry, and then two weeks later, three weeks later, they do a live stream that will be viewed by a, a hundred million people maybe that's live with no moderator where, where an employer – because, I mean, come on. You know, I know Ben Shapiro doesn't have an official management title, but he's co-founder with Jeremy Boring. So, you know, where you have the head of a major organization sitting down with someone they just fired and alive, it it doesn't make sense to me. And I think that um, it stinks. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it is is the Candace Owens Daily Wire termination, parting of ways, and this debate, is it real or has it all been one big publicity stunt? What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments, all right? And I want to tell you guys, if you would like to support my content, uh, a great way to do that is to go to MyPillow.com, use my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. You can use uh, my promo code Kane at checkout site-wide uh, and take advantage of all the deals and all the specials that are going on at MyPillow.com. That's promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. Plus, there's free shipping on all orders over $75, okay? All orders over $75. And... Um, you know, I've been talking about uh, you can save 50% off the mattress toppers. I sleep on the mattress toppers. Plus, you get free shipping because even the least expensive one's over 75 bucks. So if you would like to support my content, please go to MyPillow.com. Use my promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and load up. You know, all the MyPillow products I have, I and I've got most of them, 
Uh, I bought myself with uh, our promo code Kane at checkout. The deals are great. You'll sleep better than you've ever slept before. You'll be supporting me and all my content, plus the great Mike Lindell and MyPillow. It's promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout at MyPillow.com. Uh, also, uh, my wife Kathy and I will have a new podcast going up this evening. So uh, if, you, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and uh, look out for that podcast this evening, all right? We got a lot of things to cover, uh, my wife Kathy and I, and we're going to jump into all those this evening on the Brian Craig Show podcast, all right? Thanks, everyone, for watching. My name's Brian Craig. This is where MAGA comes to talk. I'll see you next time.